What's up, blog tribe? Every podcasting tool I'm gonna to talk about in this video is gonna be absolutely free. Here is what I'm gonna cover. I'm gonna share the free podcasting tools you can use to edit your podcast, digital audio workstations, plugins, and a lot of other cool stuff. After that, I'm actually going to walk you through the editing process for just a minute and give you more resources, all free, of course, to help you start, launch, grow, edit, and grow an awesome podcast. Let's go, links below. First up, let's talk about DAWs, digital audio workstations. GarageBand, Audacity, Reaper, Anchor.fm are the ones I'm mostly gonna talk about. There are more, but these are the ones that I recommend. By the way, if you don't know what a digital audio workstation is, it's where you edit your podcast, primarily. I recommend you go check out this other video. I'll link to it, I don't even know which side it's on. My mega video on how to start a podcast. Go check that out if you don't understand any of this stuff in this video. Really, it is comprehensive, it'll walk you through everything. All right, so these will be your main editing workhorse softwares. GarageBand, obviously, probably Mac only. Audacity, it has been around for decades. It works great. It's fairly easy to use. I recommend checking out some YouTube videos in order to get it to mastery level, but it works great. Another one is Reaper. I've used Reaper. Reaper is way more powerful. It's also a little bit more difficult to learn. You can use it as a beginner. It will take that long, but it's more complicated than GarageBand or Audacity, for real. It does technically cost money. It's like $60 one time, which is nothing, by the way, for like software tools, but you can continue to use it on the free license for quite a while. Again, if you end up using it for a while, go ahead and support them and what they do and pay the money, but you can start using it and continue to use it for absolutely free. Next up, I wanna talk about Anchor.fm. Anchor is the mobile solution, as in if you just wanted to not only edit your podcast for free on your phone, but do the entire podcast, record on your phone, publish on your phone, and all that fancy stuff, it actually works great. Some people knock it. I have a full review video and tutorial. I'll link to it here as well as the description. Go check that out if you really wanna get started on Anchor, or if you're wondering what are the drawbacks to Anchor, which there are, go check out that video I actually don't recommend most podcasters start with that, but if you're dead set on it, it still works and it's still free. It really is. So go check that video out. So there might be more digital audio workstations that are 100% free that are good for podcasters, but those are definitely the big four. Next, let's talk about plugins. Here's what I mean by plugins, by the way. Effects for your audio. Once you start recording podcast audio, you want to maybe use a little bit of compression. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, so stay tuned. As well as maybe an equalizer to make your voice sound better, reduce some background noise, and that sort of stuff. So effects is what I mean by plugins. I'm gonna be honest with you, most DAWs, especially Audacity, GarageBand, Reaper, even Anchor, they have a lot of these things in there already. In fact, I even like snuck that in. Whatever is in your digital audio workstation, just use those. Here are the big ones in my head. A compressor, some sort of noise reduction plugin, maybe an equalizer, but you probably don't need as much of that. Maybe a de but you might not even need a whole lot of that. And maybe a limiter, which I didn't actually find a free limiter. There are some out there. Maybe you can go do some Googling, but those are like some of the big plugins, mainly like compressor background noise and then maybe some of this other stuff. But we'll talk about that in just a minute, so stay tuned. I want to take this second to point you to this Airtable document, which has all the free tools that I recommend. You can find the link in the description below this video. Go down there, you just click on the links. Again, they're all free, just go check them out. There you go. So the only one that probably may not come with your DAW is maybe a loudness meter. That is measuring the loudness of your show on average. This is actually very important for podcasters. We'll talk about an automatic tool for this in a second, but Ulean works great. I've used it. I continue to use it. It's absolutely free. They have a pro version, but I've never even used it. So if you need a loudness meter, go do that. If you have trouble installing these, by the way, I recommend going to Google Audacity installing plugins. You're gonna see some acronyms like VST, or if you're on a Mac, it might be like an AT or AUT or AU, or there's some, but it's all the same thing. They're just plugins. Watch a YouTube video, you'll get it no problemo. Okay, at this point, I have to tell you about my two favorite free podcast editing tools ever, Afana and Fix My Levels. These are tools that do a bunch of the mixing and mastering and effects, making your audio sound better, reducing background noise, compressing the audio automatically. Afana is the big 
big one that everyone talks about and everyone recommends. And I have my own little tutorial video on Alphonic. I'll link to it somewhere in here and in the description. But basically you have two or three hours for free each month and then you have to pay for more. You will upload raw audio that you record on your computer or on your phone or wherever. And you'll choose some settings in here. You can see it also does loudness and leveling and noise reduction. It'll hit your loudness targets, something that you lean would measure. And it kind of does all this on autopilot. Fix My Levels does sort of the same thing. Doesn't have quite as many effects like background noise reduction and that sort of stuff, but it also works really, really well for loudness and it makes it sound better and it's just magic. You upload it, it makes it sound better. Now I will point out that the free plan is very limited for Fix My Levels, but luckily their pro plans are like $2 a month. I pay $2 a month <laughs> for like Fix My Levels and I get like four hours a month. There you go, that's all you need. And honestly, those are the editing tools, period. Get started with one of these that you feel you want to learn. Stick with it, by the way. You don't need to like try all these out. Just choose one for your computer and your budget. Stick with it. You probably don't need to download any of these. You probably have them right in your digital audio workstation, a noise reduction tool, a compression tool. Maybe get a loudness meter if you really want to do that. Or just use stuff like Auphonic and Fix My Levels. After you're done kind of splicing the audio up, you just upload the raw audio to these tools. They make it sound way better. They spit it back at you and you're ready for publishing. Speaking of publishing, really quick, Red Circle is the only 100% free as in beer podcast hosting, aside from Anchor. Anchor does host your podcast for free, but I don't actually recommend most people use Anchor. Red Circle is really great. Nothing fancy. It's really, really simple, but it is free. I personally use Buzzsprout. I'm on one of their paid plans, but they also have a free plan that I think limits the number of hours you can upload or something like that. I actually don't remember. You can go check that out. Here's inside my Buzzsprout dashboard for podcast hosting. I have a full video on podcast hosting, which I'll be happy to promote right here. And of course you can find it in the links below. If you want to compare podcast hosting or remote recording softwares, you can uh, go check out those videos for more details. I recommend Buzzsprout. I recommend Red Circle as well. If you absolutely have to go free, there you go. Now there's some other tools in here. And actually I just started this section. I might even add more by the time you're watching this video. Free sound effects, blankets and furniture for free sound dampening, reducing room echo and back background noise. I know that's a little corny, but I put that in there because it's important. Canva is obviously what I use for most of my graphic design, cover art featured images. Free Music Archive is really great as well. I've actually used them quite a bit. Finding music for your show. And I think they have sound effects on here too, but I did include Free Sound, which is really old, by the way. In fact, you'll see it, <laughs> it looks old, but there's tons of great sound effects here. I've downloaded drum set noises, horns, beeps, buzzes, cat noises. I mean, anything, you can find it on here, freesound.org. Again, you can find the link to this document in the description below. The last thing I wanna say on podcasting tools and software is that there are a thousand more that I did not mention or even bring up. You could just go to Google. Now, let me tell you what to Google. DAW, D-A-W, Digital Audio Workstation. I really don't think you need to find another one. Audacity, GarageBand, good to go. Reaper. Good to go. If you're using your phone, Anchor, good to go. Plugins and stuff, compressor, limiter, noise reduction, those sorts of things. Every effect that I've talked about, just Google free compressor plugin, free blah, blah, blah plugin, and that sort of stuff. Free graphic design tool, MailChimp, MailerLite. You can use those for your email newsletter if you're doing that sort of stuff as well. Those are all free. Just get in the habit of Googling. There's a million more out there, but these are the ones I recommend. All right, so to close out this video, I do want to talk about the editing process because that is what I titled this video, how to edit the podcast. I like to use something called the MVP, the minimum viable podcast. As in, you could go off the deep end on how to make a podcast sound great and how to edit and use effects and all this stuff, but this is the easy way, okay? Now, remove unwanted content. This is where you will actually go into your DAW and remove silences. If you have big pauses or whatever, you will remove filler words like um, uh, you know, like, if you wanna remove that sort of stuff. You remove unwanted content. This is also where you drag and drop your different media files around. Like I have an intro music, I have an outro music. I need to reduce the volume of the intro music once I start talking and then increase it to fade in, fade out. Like this is where you do that stuff. You move around the pieces of your show. Sound effects, music, voiceovers, interviews, that sort of stuff. You assemble the media clips. That's step number one for any editing process. Step number two in my book is actually noise reduction. The reason 
is if you start doing effects like compression or you added volume and add gain and all that other stuff, if you don't reduce the background noise first, you're gonna be amplifying the background noise and it's gonna be even more annoying, even more apparent. So you gotta reduce that first. Just as a quick example, here is Audacity. Here's like an audio track. They have a built-in noise reduction thing. If you go to effect, I just selected some silent parts right there, noise reduction. Get noise profile is what you're gonna click. It's gonna analyze that background noise right there that I selected. And then if you select the entire track, I'm gonna select all my audio here, which I just did, and go to repeat noise reduction, or you could click down here again, it's going to reduce that noise. You might even be able to see it. Well, it's gonna take a minute and a half, so I'm not gonna show you that. And it looks like it's going to take a little while. It's about to come done right now. You might be able to see it. There we go, boom, right there, noise reduction. And then after you can reduce some background noise, if you have any, by the way, you can skip that step. You're in a great recording environment. You may not need it. Compressing is basically taking the loud parts of your audio and bringing them down and taking the soft parts of your audio and making them louder. Basically you do this so you don't overwhelm people with the loud parts and you don't make them like turn the volume knob up if they can't hear it on the soft parts. You wanna smooth out the entire audio. So I'm actually just gonna select this entire track this is Audacity. Again, if you use Reaper, GarageBand, they all have these built in. You can find them. Effects, compressor, there you go. Again, don't need to go download anything, just use this. You can also do a little bit of, bit of YouTubing to find out how to use these and fine tune them if you want. Uh, you can also just like leave it the default settings and see what happens. You could try it this way and see how it sounds and if it sounds a little better. You can actually see this in Audacity, by the way, that'll actually show you. These files will come down, like these peaks will come down. You'll see the audio compressed a little bit. All right, and there we go. You actually see the peak audio, the loudest parts of the audio came down a little bit and it probably brought the other parts up a little bit. Next up is to hit the loudness standards, loudness leveling. Here's what that means. I talked about moving the volume knob up and down. You don't want your audience to do that. While they're listening to your podcast, they shouldn't have to adjust the volume knob. Loudness standards say that they shouldn't have to adjust the volume knob when they start listening to your podcast from their previous podcast, Joe Rogan's podcast or some other podcast. They switch over to your podcast. They should be roughly the same volume. All podcasts everywhere should be roughly the same volume. That's what that means. Ulean loudness meter will analyze your audio in your digital audio workstation in Audacity or Reaper or whatever, and it'll tell you where you're at. Minus 16 LUFS, L-U-F-S, that's how they measure loudness. Minus 16 is the gold standard. It's what your podcast should be. Again, I recommend skipping this step into Authonic or Fix My Levels where it does it on autopilot. You can do it manually. It's kind of a pain. I never do it. You can use the loudness meter if you want to, or you can just finish assembling your audio. You can reduce the background noise. You can do a bit of compression, and then you can do what I do, which is go ahead and export the file. Like, cool, export. I'm done now. I got my, uh, my audios aligned, reduce background noise. I did a little bit of compression, export. I usually am done here. I will export the file generally as a WAV format, although you can do mp3 mp3 is less quality but smaller file size it's what you should upload to your podcast host if you're uploading to Authonic first or fix my levels i generally do a wave i'll save it on my computer at some point and then i'll upload it to Authonic and have Authonic do its magic stuff literally takes like five seconds and then i'm done and that my friends is literally it that's how i edit my podcast and i've been doing that for 11 years at this point i don't do a whole lot of eq i've done a little bit in the past i usually use a limiter to increase the volume to loudness standards before I export. If you want to learn what that is, go watch some of my other videos in the description below. But other than that, that's it. All right, fam, that is all I have for you today. Go check out all the videos and resources in the description below, as well as this Airtable base, where you can just click on all these free tools. That's all I got. Happy podcasting. Like, subscribe, comment, hashtag YouTube, whatever. Adios.